As for the air bleeds on top of the carburetor, I have left those 100% stock. I have not touched them at all. I mentioned earlier that, that this carburetor used to be an alcohol carburetor, and I mentioned in a previous video that I'm gonna be switching over to a Proform 750 E85 carburetor, and the Proform carburetor actually comes with a 130 thousandths stainless steel needle and seat, and that is to prevent being destroyed by the E85 during regular operation. Because this was an alcohol carburetor, this also came with a stainless steel needle and seat. And believe it or not, the sizes are pretty much identical. I've got a 130 needle and seat in the in the Demon, and I've got a 130 needle and seat in the Proform carburetor. So I won't need to do anything to the needle and seats themselves. If you're running a standard gasoline carburetor, 110 might get you there, but a larger needle and seat does not hurt anything. If anything, it'll keep you from leaning out. It'll keep the fuel in the bowls. So if you guys can get your hands on 130, 140, 150 needle and seats, go ahead and throw them in there. Nothing bad's gonna happen. There are no ill effects. There's a reason the old 4150s, 4160s used to come with 90 thousandths and 100 thousandths needle and seats. And all the modern rebuild kits come with 110 thousandths needle and seats because they found out that the larger openings do help keep the fuel inside the carburetor and they haven't found any problems with running the larger needle and seats. If you look inside the fuel bowl of the carburetor, you're going to see nitro fill floats. Some of these carburetors run a nitro fill in the rear and a brass float in the front because some of them come factory with jet extension in the rear and they don't come in the front. So they, they like to mix and match their carburetor selection. Do not for any reason run brass floats in a blow through carburetor. You are just asking for trouble. If that float comes apart and it sinks and you're in the middle of boost and boost is pushing that fuel through your carburetor, there's a good chance you're going to have not only a misfire, but you can hydro lock your motor if you're running 25 pounds of fuel pressure and there is nothing stopping the fuel pressure from going into the carburetor you will overflow your carburetor you will cause damage there are some people who have been able to run the brass floats they don't run them for very long and nine times out of ten there are no problems but why risk it get yourself a set of nitro fuel floats you can get them used you can get them new you can get them out of old carburetors but please swap them out for nitro fill floats. Do not waste your time running the brass floats. I'm gonna go ahead and remove the power valve so I can show you guys something. So I just unscrewed the boost activated power valve and as you guys can see it's significantly smaller and looks a little different than a traditional power valve. I only have one major complaint is that a standard wrench won't fit on this. I've tried a one inch, I've tried 24 millimeters. Uh, it's kind of an odd shape. I have my Proform power valve removal tool and this thing won't even drop in. So I'm gonna shave this down a little bit on my bench grinder and hopefully it'll fit this tool and I won't have to fool around with adjustable wrenches. This power valve is also sealed using an O-ring instead of a paper gasket, which is always nice. O-rings do seal better than paper. The power valve is fairly low profile except for this area right here. You guys can see that the area around the adjustment screw is caved in and that's because it was hitting the main body right here whether or not it's going to hit my proform main body i haven't quite gotten that far yet but hopefully it doesn't when i installed this on here i just basically smashed it together and that made it fit but if you do want to make this fit perfectly, you're probably going to want to take a die grinder and maybe shave off a little bit or maybe take a Dremel tool and shave off a little bit of this corner. And the better this thing seats, the better the gasket's going to seal and you're going to have a less chance of it leaking. This power valve is very similar to a standard four window power valve, except these openings are, are a lot bigger. It's a very simple design. It just has a spring in here with a marble and the marble is supposed to seal up against some sort of machine surface in here. And as fluid pressure in the bowl increases, the fluid pressure is going to push up against this marble. When that marble gets pushed back, then the fuel will be able to flow through these four windows. A lot of the higher end carb experts will tell you that these don't work, that they leak, that they don't work properly. I personally have not had any issues. As soon as I do have issues with them, I will let you guys know. But like I said, over 500 horsepower, which is over 600 horsepower on an engine dyno so that's not bad at all for one of these little power valves my only regret is that i didn't buy two of them one for the front one for the back and i will go ahead and explain that a little bit later as well next on the list is what i've done to the mirroring block itself i don't know if you guys can actually see but i've drilled an extra set of holes 
for the power valve restrictor channels and I've pulled out the power valve restrictor channels that came factory in them completely and I drilled out those holes. The whole purpose of this is you're allowing the power valve to feed the main well more efficiently by adding another path for it to travel. So I drilled them right around as close as I could to the same area. It does help if they're almost exactly the same because as you guys can see, I drilled one up a little bit higher than the other one and that could change the tune a little bit. But as for me, overall, it seemed to work fine. As you go up in boost, you tend to have to drill these out more and more. But the ideal thing is to have a boost activated power valve in the front and the rear. As for the rear of this carburetor, I'm running a power valve block off. The emulsion stack is, is exactly the same. And the only thing I did was I drilled out the IFRs quite a bit. And this is actually pretty important, but I'll save that for a little bit later in this video. The question that comes up is, what did you do about the transition between part throttle and half throttle? What about that slight area where a regular power valve would be useful? Because if you install a boost activated power valve in the front, this won't actually kick on until you are about 2 or 3 or 4 or 5 PSI into your run. And before that, you don't have any kind of power valve enrichment. How do you go about it and why isn't this just in the rear? Another question that I get is, can't I just run my boost activated power valve in the rear and a regular power valve in the front? That way when I'm on boost, I have the boost activated power valve in the rear and then when I'm driving around, I have the regular power valve in the front. The answer is you can, but I would not do it that way and I'm gonna to explain to you briefly why that is. So on this carburetor that I have here, you would normally have a jet split of like, let's say 70, 80 or 75, 80 or whatever. You have a jet split. And normally on a regular naturally aspirated carburetor, you would use the regular va vacuum operated power valve to complement the primary side. So it catches up to the secondary side at wide open throttle. And at wide open throttle, typically you will tend to run very close to the same air fuel ratios front and rear. The only time that that varies is that if the intake manifold doesn't have a very nice design and one corner or one side needs a little bit more fuel, then you would adjust for that. But, but typically, once you're all in and everything's open and the power valve is functioning like it's supposed to, primary and secondary sides should flow about the same. Now, taking that into account, if you install vacuum-activated power valves in the front and no power valve in the rear, let's say you have a 70 jet in the front, 80 jet in the rear, once you're inside boost, boost pressure will force that vacuum op operated power valve closed. Once that's closed, you're still running 70 jets in the front and 80 jets in the rear. So now the problem is that half your carburetor is running leaner than the other half. Now, instead of it being close to maybe one or two size jet difference, now it's a 10 jet difference between the front and the rear. So what will end up happening if you install a boost activated power valve in the rear and a vacuum operated power valve in the front is that you're going to lose that vacuum operated power valve in the front and then you're going to add a bunch of fuel to the rear. So instead of a 10 jet split, you're probably going to have like a 30 jet split. So the front is going to run 70 and the rear is going to run like 100 or 110 if you account for the power valve restrictor channels. Or it could be even more depending on how much fuel you actually need. So what's going to end up happening is that your front cylinders are going to run lean and your rear cylinders are going to run rich.